Hi, so this is Charlie Calvert and we're going to put together a little short video here showing how to install Ubuntu Server on VirtualBox running on Windows. So I've got a copy of Windows Ultimate here. I've got VirtualBox installed. Um, I checked to make sure I've got the most recent version of VirtualBox. If you don't, you can always go to the VirtualBox website here at www.virtualbox.org and you can download uh, the most recent copy. <clears throat> Assuming you have it, the next thing to do would be to head over to www.ubuntu.com and go to their download page, <clears throat> turn to the Servers tab, and download, wow that's interesting, and download a copy of Ubuntu Server. And what we can choose here is either um, 10.4, which is the long-term service support version, or their latest version. We're going to go ahead and just grab the latest one, since that sounds nice to us. If you're a little more conservative, get the uh, long-term service version. And then 64-bit, 32-bit, depending on which best for your system. And then you go ahead and choose Download. And it pops up a little dialog here, and you, they say, do you want to save the file? And, and you go ahead and you can um, go ahead and begin that download. When you're done with the download, um, the best thing to do is perhaps find a, a place where you can store them so you can have them. So I create a little directory where I store the ISOs that I've downloaded. And um, <clears throat> then I, I'm ready, you know, I've got them available for me if I need them when I'm, or when I need them while I'm uh, installing. So let's come back over here to VirtualBox now. And what we're going to do now is we want to create a new server here, a new virtual machine. So you click on New. I choose Next here. I type in what I want to build here, which is a Linux server, 11.10. And it's Linux, of course, and it's Ubuntu, right? But it's Ubuntu 64-bit. Remember, we downloaded the 64-bit version. So we need a little bit of memory here, and um, I have 8 gigs on my machine, so why stint? And then over here, we're going to create a new hard disk, and I choose New. I create a... Uh, virtual disk disk image, I'll have it dynamically allocated and I, you know, I might want a little bit of space here. Probably 18 gigs is, is you know, more than enough for our purposes. It's, it's being wildly liberal. So let's go ahead and choose that. Then we're done. We're finished there. We'll go ahead and create our hard drive. So the next thing you want to do is go to settings and you're going to go to the storage area and you want to attach to that drive that you just downloaded. So there's a number of ways for you to browse out to the drive that you might want to uh, pick. Um, they can let you choose from locations that are already available or I believe that I've um, left copy here where it's handy in my um, public domain. So now I'm attached to that ISO image, that virtual CD that I downloaded from Ubuntu. So I click on OK here. And perhaps I might also want to take a quick look at the uh, network settings just to confirm that they're set to NAT here. You don't need to do anything uh, special with them. You can just leave them at the default uh, NAT value there for the network. So let's go. We're off and running here, and we'll go ahead and we'll start VirtualBox. And the first thing it does is bring you into the Ubuntu install because we attached that virtual drive. And then it says, "Do you want to install Ubuntu? Uh, install Ubuntu server?" And you could press F4 here and get into modes, but really the simplest thing to do is just just go with the flow. And we're English here. Here I am in America. You'd never guess listening to my accent, right? Um, you can try to have your keyboard layout detected by pressing a series of keys. Do you want to do this? No, I'm, I'm good. I can figure it out. English USS, they figured it out for me. English US. So they go ahead and they got me through the keyboard um, ordeal there. And now we're loading some additional components and they come along. 
and it, it doesn't really take them all that long to do this. So much of this install is simply a automated install. One just kind of goes with the flow and lets it do it there. Now it's done with that section of it now. It's attempting to auto, it wants to set up a network con connection here. It's better if you're on the network. And uh, <clears throat> it was able to do that, so it connected it. Now I need to name my server, and this is the uh, um, movie server here. We'll just give it a nice uh, movie serve name like that. And then we'll go ahead and we I press tab to get to that continue button. And then it starts going through. It's setting up the clock here. It feels that that's an important part of the install. I'm not sure I agree. Um, it thinks I'm in Los Angeles and I'm not quite, but they got it right. I'm on the West Coast, so they're doing an excellent job there. Do you want to um, use the entire disk up and we created a virtual disk and we'll go ahead and do it. We could set up the LVM if we wanted to do something a little more complicated. Um, so right now it's asking me what drive do I want and the big thing to notice is that it does say VBox in there. You can sometimes get a little confused, oh my gosh, if I picked my hard drive. It won't, but it does say that this is the VBox hard disk and it's 19.3 gig which is what we said. So it says, do you want to go with the selections you've made? And we say yes. We'll go ahead and go with it. Now it, it sits and spends a little bit of time partitioning uh, the <clears throat> things and it's going to just walk us through the install because it feels it knows what it's doing and, and I'm really in a mood to agree that it probably does know all about it and we'll just uh, let it uh, go ahead and do that. So that process takes a few minutes and then when you're done you're looking at this screen and it asks you for a name and you can go ahead and type in your full name here with this particular option. So <clears throat> we'll go ahead and do that. And again, you can tab to get over to that continue button. And the name of the account, now I'll go ahead and take their default, tab on to the next one. Choose a password for the next for the user. And uh, you can go ahead and choose a simple one if you'd like here. And they felt my password was a little weak. And uh, I, I'm with them on that. And then We'll go ahead and encrypt the home directory, and I'm going to say no to that. So then they want to uh, set up apt for doing the installs. And do you have a HTTP proxy? And we're going no, we don't want to do that. So it's setting up apt here, which is uh, <clears throat> the tool that's used to download packages from the internet to help them uh, um, work through the install and uh, updates of software and adding new software. And in other videos, we'll probably be using that quite a bit, but probably not so much right now. So we'll go ahead and let that process run for a little bit. So that didn't take really very long. It was really only a few seconds. And then it says it's setting up and selecting and installing software. And so we'll let it uh, just work for a little bit longer. And that stage didn't really take all that long, just a minute or two. And then it brings us to this screen here where it's going to set up Taskful. And it says, do you want to do automatic updates? And I actually am on and off the network enough that I don't want it to try to do that automatically. I'm, I'm good with uh, making the decision about when the updates will go. <clears throat> so then it's asking what we want to have installed here. And certainly SSH is, is, is a good thing to always have installed. Um, I, many of these things are worth installing, um, but I am going to actually um, pass all but the SSH um, by because uh, I would want to do them manually for various reasons later. So um, normally you would certainly want to choose at least LAMP, but it's not hard to come back and do these things later if you decide that's the way you would prefer, which is what I would like to do here. So now it says it's retrieving about 167 packages and it takes a look at them and does a little bit of uh, install. So we'll go ahead and we'll let that run for just a few moments. So the next phase here is to install Grub. And so that's what starts happening after um, 
you installed all those packages. <clears throat> and then it says here, seems that this new XX is the only operating system on the operating system. Warning, install Grub Bootloader, the master boot record. And I go, yeah, on this drive, you're welcome to do that because it's a virtual drive. So we go ahead and we choose yes here for this option. And it goes ahead and runs Grub. <clears throat> Because remember, we're installing here to a virtual hard drive. We're not installing on our real hard drive. It's just a file on our physical hard drive that's being treated as if it were a hard drive. So we're not actually doing the install into the um, boot sector of our physical hard drive. It's into the boot sector of the virtual hard drive, which is just a file on the operating system, on the uh, hard drive. So installation is complete, it says, so it is time to boot into your new system. Make sure to remove the installation media, and that actually is done automatically by um, VirtualBox for us. So we can simply go ahead and press continue. It says it finishes the install, and it goes ahead and sends a signal to the system that it's going to uh, shut down. And then it boots back up, and here we are, you know, in the operating system. It goes ahead and does that and lets us... Uh, proceed now and uh, I'm not on a particularly rapid system but it doesn't take too long to step through the install and now here I am at the login prompt I have finished the install it's been completed so I can simply type Charlie here which is the username I chose and my unbeatable password and then it, it logs me in and I'm ready to go so uh, there's, there's your Linux operating system, and we're all done. So we'll come back and we'll talk more about what to do with our Linux server once we have it. We just wanted to walk our way through the install. So thank you for watching. Charlie Calvert, come back and we'll learn a little bit more about running uh, Linux inside of VirtualBox.